the understanding of Zen, the understanding of awakening, is one of the most dangerous things in the world. And for a person who cannot contain it, it's like putting a million volts through your electric shaver. You blow your mind and it stays blown. Now, if you go off in that way, that is what would be called in Buddhism a Pracheka Buddha, private Buddha. He's one who goes off into the transcendental world and is never seen again. And he's made a mistake from the standpoint of Buddhism because from the standpoint of Buddhism there is no fundamental difference between the transcendental world and this everyday world. The Bodhisattva, you see, who doesn't go off into a nirvana and stay there forever and ever, but comes back and lives ordinary everyday life to help other beings to see through it too. He doesn't come back because he feels he has some sort of solemn duty to help mankind and all that kind of pious cant. He comes back because he sees the two worlds are the same. He sees all other beings as Buddhas. He sees them, to use a phrase of G.K. Chesterton's, but now a great thing in the street seems any human nod. We are move in strange democracy, the million masks of God. And it's fantastic to look at people and see that they really, uh, deep down, are enlightened. They're it. Their face is the divine. And they look at you and say, oh no, but I'm not divine, I'm just ordinary little me. And you look at them in a funny way, and here you see the Buddha nature looking out of their eyes straight at you and saying it's not. And saying it quite sincerely. And that's why when you get up against a great guru, he has a funny look in his eye. When you say, I have a problem, I really, I'm mixed up and I don't understand. He looks at you in this queer way. And you think, oh dear me, he's reading my most secret thoughts. He's seeing all the awful things I am, all my cowardice, all my shortcomings. He's not doing anything of the kind. He isn't even interested in such things. He's looking at Shiva in you, saying, my God, Shiva, won't you come off it? <laughs> if you really understand that Zen, that Buddhist idea of enlightenment is not comprehended in the idea of the transcendental, neither is it comprehended in the idea of the ordinary. Not in terms of the infinite, not in terms of the finite. Not in terms of the eternal, not in terms of the temporal, because they're all concepts. The most ordinary sights and sounds and smells, the texture of shadows on the floor in front of you, all these things without being named and saying that's a shadow, that's red, that's brown, that's somebody's foot. When you don't name things any longer, you start seeing them. And it is only through stopping, fixing conceptions on the world of color and sound that you really begin to hear it and see it. And as a matter of fact, far from being boring, the world, when looked at without chatter, becomes amazingly interesting in the very simplest things of everyday life. Magic. In the words of the poet Hokoji, marvelous power and supernatural activity. Drawing water, carrying wood. <laughs>